I'm going to go through a rather lengthy video here on rational function asymptotes. So we basically have three types of asymptotes. Vertical, horizontal, slanted, which we'll call oblique, and we'll have an occasional function where there is a hole in the domain but not a vertical asymptote. All right, so this is something you want to probably pause and copy down. Some basic notes on vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes occur every time that the x value, or that every time that x values turn the denominator to zero, all right, with the exception of when that causes a hole. All right, when there's a hole in the graph, then that x value not only turns the denominator to zero, but it also turns the numerator to zero. So that won't be a vertical asymptote, that'll just be a hole in the graph, which we'll get, which we'll kind of touch on at the end. Horizontal asymptotes occur when either the numerator and denominator have the same exact degree. When that's the case, then the horizontal asymptote will just be the ratio of the lead coefficients. So if this were, if this were like 16x to the third over 2x to the third, your horizontal asymptote would be at y equals 4. No, y equals 8, 16 over 2, duh. All right, so it's just the ratio of the lead coefficients if the degrees are the same. All right, if the degree is, uh, is higher on the bottom, you know, it doesn't matter if it's one degree higher or a lot higher, you know, 3 over 14. No matter what the situation is, if the numerator is smaller than the denominator, in terms of leading degree, highest degree, then your horizontal asymptote is y equals zero, basically the x-axis. Oblique, so we're talking slanted asymptotes, occur when the top degree, the numerator degree, is exactly one higher than the bottom. So four or three or two and one or one and zero. All right, and to figure out the equation of those those lines, all you need to do is do some division. If the top, or excuse me, if the uh, denominator is a linear term, you know, if it's a binomial or, or if it's just a linear by itself, all you need to do is do synthetic. If the denominator is a higher degree term, then you have to do some long division. All right, so let's jump in. We have nine examples, so let's get started. Number one, talk about domain and vertical asymptotes, if any, of the following function. All right, so I'll show you how to do one or two, and then what you might want to do is pause for the remaining uh, seven, and just kind of try those before, before I do them for you. We're gonna have nine examples total. All right, so first things first, <coughs> we want to talk about vertical asymptotes and how they restrict the domain. So the domain is, be is gonna be restricted when the denominator is zero. So set the denominator equal to zero. All right, so here we're probably gonna to wanna to factor this if possible. Some of these don't factor, but you know, for, for our purposes, we're probably gonna choose nice and easy ones today. So we have, uh, let's see, plus four, minus two, will that work? X squared outside is minus two, inside is positive four. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so we have y equals x plus 2 divided by the fact or the product of these binomials. All right. So when one or both of them are zero, then the whole denominator is zero. So when x is negative 4 or positive 2, those are our domain restrictions. All right. And those are also, <clears throat> in this case, our vertical asymptotes. So our vertical asymptotes, our vertical asymptotes <clears throat> are basically the two lines where x can't touch. All right, an asymptote by definition, I want to touch on that here, by definition is, you know, when we're talking vertical asymptotes especially, it's basically, a barrier or a wall where the graph can't touch. So, you know, if they're vertical, they're looking like this. All right, so graphs, you know, can get infinitely close to that vertical asymptote, but they can't touch it. So sometimes you have something that looks like that. All right, and we're going to graph some of these and get 
a really good idea of what an asymptote actually looks like. So these are your vertical asymptotes. All right, what I'm going to do before I actually put a circle around those and, and finalize them as our answers is I'm going to just simply plug them back into our whole function and see, if, and see what we get. All right, so I'm going to go f of negative 4. f of negative 4 is, let's see, negative 4 plus 2 divided by negative 4 plus 4, negative 4 minus 2. So f of negative 4, if we evaluate that term or at that x value, we get negative 2 over 0. All right. When that's the case, that's definitely a vertical asymptote. Let's evaluate positive 2. So I get 2 plus 2, and the bottom is 0 as well. So that's 4 over 0, and that's a good thing. If either of these turned out to be 0 over 0, that would be when the whole exists. All right, so those are our vertical asymptotes. All right, next thing we want to look at it are the horizontal asymptotes. Remember the rules for horizontal asymptotes? We're looking at the lead degree. Here it's a 1, here it's a 2. So if the denominator, the degree and the denominator is bigger than the numerator, then you have a horizontal at y equals 0. y equals 0. All right, and you can graph those as well. So let's take a look at what this graph looks like. So we go and just go to our regular graphing calculators here. We want to go x plus 2 in parentheses divided by x let's see, squared plus 2x minus 8. Hopefully we'll get a decent look at this graph. If not, we'll have to change the domain, change the range, like the window and stuff. But this looks pretty good. So I'm showing a vertical asymptote here where x equals negative 4 is, right here where x equals positive 2, and then a horizontal at y equals 0. What I'm going to probably do here just to show you what it really looks like a little bit better is take my axes off just for a second here. I'll give you a better look. All right. So again, horizontal at y equals 0, vertical at negative 4, and at x equals 2 as well. Cool. Number 2. Here we go, we have a rational function here. I'm going to want to factor, let's factor the, uh, let's just factor the bottom and see if we can start with that. So we have x and x, this is going to be minus 6 plus 1, so that cancels out. All right, that leaves us with positive 6 and negative 1. All right, so those are our domain restrictions. Let's check to make sure that they're not holes. So up here we have, if we plug in 6, we have 36 plus 12. That's definitely a number, a non-zero number, and the bottom is 0. Let's check negative 1. We have negative 1 squared minus 2 minus 3. That is definitely a non-zero. All right, so we're not dealing with holes here. These are for sure our vertical asymptotes. These are vertical asymptotes, definitely. All right, and again, let's look at potential horizontal. We have 2 and 2 as our degree and numerator denominator. That's the indicator that we have a horizontal asymptote. And the rule here is if they're the same exact degree, just take the ratio of the lead coefficients. So it's going to be 1 divided by 1. So your horizontal asymptote is at y equals 1. All right. Again, go to your graph, check it out. You can verify. Uh, let's, let's mention briefly also uh, how to write the domain. So when you have domain, domain is, as you know, the set of all x values. The set of all x values. So I'll show you this set notation here. So the domain will be all x values that are an element of the real numbers such that x cannot equal 6 
or negative one. All right, this upside down A means uh, every X, so the set of all X's that are elements of the reals such that, sometimes we abbreviate it ST, or sometimes you just put a colon there, such that X cannot be these two things. All right, the range, same thing. It's the set of all Y values that are real, such that Y cannot be one. And if you wanted to do that for number, uh, number one, you would do the same thing. Domain is the set of all X values in the reals, such that X cannot be those two things. Same thing for the range. So it's the set of all Y values that are elements of the reals such that Y cannot be zero. Cool. Number three. All right, let's factor the bottom again. X plus three, X plus two, cancel that out. Uh, the numerator factors, this is a difference of cubes, so if I have this right, I think it's x minus 2. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think that's good. And you can also bring that to, uh, let's see. You can simplify that all the way down to this thing. All right, it might not be necessary, but, you know, just good practice. Again, domain restrictions negative three, negative two. All right, check to make sure that the uh, ratio doesn't yield a zero over zero. Uh, in this case, we have, uh, we do actually have a, uh, a zero over zero, but what you really wanna look at, you know, if you plug in negative two right in here, that'll give you a zero, right? But, well, that's not actually not true. Here's why. This, kind of a silly mistake by me. This right here, x plus two quantity squared, is not the factor of this. I screwed that up, my bad. Glad I caught that. All right, so if you plug in uh, negative three in the top, you get a non-zero number. If you plug it in the bottom, you get a zero, of course. If you plug in negative two in the top, you get a non-zero. All right, it's negative two times negative two times negative two, that's negative eight. Minus eight is negative 16. So these are definitely both vertical asymptotes. See, this is our verts. All right. And uh, this one also, if you look at the degrees, we're looking at a three and a two. All right, so that's an indicator that since the numerator degree is exactly one bigger, that's an indicator that we're going to have an oblique asymptote, or a slanted one. So this is kind of interesting. Let's look at what it actually is. To calculate that oblique asymptote, again, if the, num if the denominator is, is non-linear, if it's higher than a first degree, you have to do the old long division, which I have a video on if you want to check it out. Really quick video. All right, here we have uh, <clears throat> our denominator is our is what we're dividing it by. X to the third minus eight goes in here, but remember you have to leave some placeholders for the squared term and for the linear term. And now we're just gonna do some long division to find our oblique asymptote. Whatever's in the top will be our answer. So how many times is X squared going to X to the third? Well, that is of course just X. So multiply that back down and we get x to the third plus 5x squared plus 6x. We're going to subtract that, put that trinomial in parentheses. We get negative 5x squared minus 6x. Bring this down. Now we're asking how many times does x to the second power go into this lead term? Well, that answer is, of course, minus 5. So multiply back down. And we get zero, and we'll put this in parentheses, of course. We get zero, we get, I guess, 19 and 22. This remainder doesn't matter, though. The only thing that matters is up here. So our oblique asymptote is y equals x minus five. And I'll graph this one just to show you, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what obliques look like. 
turn our axes back on. Clear that out. And we have, let's see, x to the third minus 8. Close parenthesis divided by x squared plus 5x plus 6. All right, so oblique asymptotes give you really strange looking graphs. This one's kind of odd. All right, the, the oblique asymptote we can also graph here just to kind of get an idea of how that all fits together. All right, I'm going to change the trace on that, make it a little, kind of like a little comet. All right, watch what happens here. We have the regular one, and then the asymptote kind of follows along that, and what's going to happen is the curve one, y sub one, is going to infinitely get close to that oblique. All right, let's zoom out, and we'll get a better idea. So here comes our curve one. It's kind of weird. All right, you see your, your two vertical asymptotes at negative three and negative two. All right, and then this is the path of the oblique asymptote. So it's kind of interesting. All right, so that has two vertical and an oblique. Number four. All right, so let's see. Factor the bottom. We've got a difference of squares. So this is going to be 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. All right, so we have, let's see, 2x plus 3 equals 0, 2x minus 3 equals 0. So x equals negative 1.5 or positive 1.5. These are our vertical asymptotes. And before you confirm that, you know, you want to make sure that you can put it in the numerator and not get a zero. If you do, then there's going to be a hole there, which we'll get to again. Uh, and you also have a horizontal because the degree is the same in the top and bottom. So you just take the ratio of coefficients, y equals one fourth. All right, that's of course. Sorry, there's the bell. That's of course this way, right? And you can graph to confirm that. Number five. All right, so we've got uh, this one here. It's kind of an interesting one because the the denominator. If you were to solve that thing, you're looking at you know the square root the plus and minus square root of i you know, times the square root of 1. So it's basically just plus and minus i. All right, so this doesn't have any real solutions. No real solutions. So it's kind of an interesting one right off the bat. All right, in terms of its asymptotes, though, the numerator degree is smaller than the denominator degree. So that's an indicator that we have an ho a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. All right, and it's probably worth graphing this one just to see, just to kind of get an idea of what it looks like, because it's, again, kind of a weird one. So let's clear this out here. So we've got x plus 2 divided by quantity x squared plus 1. And I'll zoom standard, zoom 6. All right, so this one kind of looks strange. Let's zoom in. It's pretty active at the, at, in the middle of the graph, but the ends of the graph are pretty boring. All right, let's zoom back out. Zoom 6. And I think I'll take the axes off as well. I'll go to format. Sometimes I take the axes off when I'm looking at horizontal asymptotes that are equivalent to the x or to the uh, yeah to the x-axis. All right, so this one looks like this, right? The horizontal asymptote, as we said, is at y equals zero. That makes sense. All right, but what's kind of strange about horizontal asymptotes is that, unlike vertical asymptotes, it's totally fine for for the graph to actually um, <clears throat> touch the asymptote. 
and go through it. <coughs> so you can see right here at negative 2, right, if you look at the values, if, when x is negative 2, y is 0. All right, so that's kind of an interesting part to understand about horizontal asymptotes. They can totally cross through them, but it's basically like, you know, as long as they sort of hug that line to the top, you know, just slightly above it or slightly below it, it's still considered an asymptote. So number five is kind of an interesting, an interesting little problem here. All right, so the, uh, I mean, when I when I say no real solutions, that's kind of that's kind of like a miss. I kind of misspoke there, but uh, what I'm what I'm talking about here is that the the denominator uh, doesn't have any domain restrictions on it that are real. All right, so if you wanted to actually figure out the zero of it, which we said we just saw was negative two, what you would do is set the top equal to zero, and you'd get x plus two equal to zero, because when I know the top is zero, the whole thing is zero. All right, so x equals negative two is, is considered a zero. All right, that's a solution to this thing that'll make, uh, that'll make my y value zero. All right, so you would go more formally, when does that rational equation equal zero? Well, when the top equals zero. And you just gotta be careful to check it in the bottom to make sure the bottom's not zero as well. All right, so that's kind of like a, a weird one right there. Number six. All right, so number six, we are going to, can't factor the bottom, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set the bottom equal to zero. So I have x minus one equals zero. So x equals one. All right, that's a potential vertical asymptote. What I'll do is I'll plug it back in the numerator to see if it yields a zero as well. Negative three times one squared is negative three. The top is a non-zero number. So this is officially a vertical asymptote. All right, it also has an oblique asymptote, as you can see, because the top degree is exactly one bigger than the bottom degree, two and one. All right, so what we need to do here is divide. So I'm gonna divide x minus one is what I'm dividing by, negative three x squared, leave a placeholder for the linear term, and then the constant term is at the end. So again, just to reiterate here, we're going, how many times does the yellow term, the lead term, go into the lead term? All right, and that of course is negative three times x. I'm gonna put that over the other linear term. And we'll multiply back down, negative three x squared plus three x. I will subtract, and I've got, uh, let's see, those cancel zero minus three x, bring down that positive two. So how many times is the lead term x? Again, I'll highlight it. Go into negative three x. Well, that answer, of course, is negative three. So that number goes right here. Subtract parentheses, and I get a remainder of negative one. I don't, I don't really concern myself with that remainder. All I'm really looking at is the top right here, and that'll turn into my oblique asymptote. So you can graph that to confirm. And again, compare the graph. Maybe I'll do this one too. I'm not gonna graph all of them because I'm kind of going long here, but I'll graph this one just, just to show you maybe one or two more here. So I'll open my parentheses, negative three x squared plus two, close parentheses, divided by quantity x minus one. And I'll put my, my oblique asymptote. And I, I went over here and again, I changed that little, the graphing style to something like comet. There's a tail on it that we can see a little bit better. So let's see if these make a nice relationship. Yeah, you can see that that's my linear asymptote there. I'll put my let me put my axes back on here. So go to format, and then I'll graph it again. So there's my uh, my vertical asymptote at one, and it might be helpful to zoom out here to get a really 
maybe a more general idea. It might not look great, but let's see. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty clear that that the curvy graph is following that that linear negative 3x minus 3 oblique asymptote. It's pretty interesting. Number 7. All right, so we've got, let's see, vertical asymptote <clears throat> at positive 2. So vertical x equals 2. Just check to make sure that that doesn't make the numerator 0. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 6, 10, that's 12. All right, so it's non-zero over zero. So that's definitely a vertical asymptote. And let's see, the oblique applies here as well because our numerator is, degree is one bigger than our denominator. So again, we want to divide and Again, when the uh, I think I mentioned this earlier, when the denominator is linear, you can actually use synthetic. Synthetic, you would change the sign of that term and put it right here, and you'd go one, three, two, and do it this way. All right, so that's let's see, x plus five. All right, let's see if we do the same thing. X goes into x squared x times. Follow that back down, subtract, parentheses, 5x plus 2, so that's plus 5, 5x minus 10, so that's a remainder of positive 10, yeah. So our oblique asymptote is x plus 5. I won't confirm that one graphically, but you can certainly do so. Number 8. All right, this one's a little bit interesting. We definitely uh, might want to rearrange it first to get that denominator into more of a standard form. Negative x squared plus 3 is how this would translate. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is set my bottom equal to 0. I'm looking for vertical asymptotes, so I go negative x squared plus 3 equals 0, negative x squared equals negative 3, positive x squared equals positive 3, so it's positive and negative square root of 3, and those, both of them are my vertical asymptotes. Oblique also applies here, I believe, because our numerator degree is 3, our denominator is a 2. So what we want to do is do long division. You can't do synthetic here. Numerator is kind of interesting. It's 2x cubed plus 4x squared. There's a linear term that's missing, minus 9. All right, so question number one, how many times does negative x squared go into 2x to the third? Well, that's going to be, put it all the way over here, negative 2 times x. So if we multiply back down, it's positive 2x to the third minus uh, 6x. So minus 6x. So notice I'm keeping it nice in line here. Columns subtract. So I get those to cancel out. 4x squared minus a, there's actually like a placeholder here, remember, so that's just 4x squared. 0x minus negative 6x is that, and I'll bring down my negative 9. How many times does negative x squared go into the lead term? 4x squared, that's just uh, negative 4, so multiply back down, 4x squared. Minus 12 goes over here, so we subtract and I'm left with 6x you know, plus 3, but as we said before, that doesn't really matter. What matters is up here. So our oblique is going to be is going to be this, negative 2x minus 4. All right, and again, you can confirm that graphically. Uh, getting close to the end here. One more. I know this is kind of a long video, but I think it's important. Last one. Okay, so let's factor the bottom. Let's see if we can factor the bottom out. Uh, I think we can. x plus 5, x plus 2. 
that'll cancel. So we're left with x equals negative 5 and x equals negative 2 as our potential verticals. All right, I say potential because again you want to substitute both values back in one at a time and see if the fraction is actually equal to uh, 0 over 0. If it is, that's, that's going to yield a hole in the graph. All right, so here we go. Let's do, you can, you can factor the top as well. Uh, you don't have to do that though. So if we take and we find f of negative 5, that means we plug in negative 5 every, everywhere we see an x. So that's 25 minus 5 minus 20 over, that'll be definitely be 0. So let's see, 25 minus 5, that's 20. 20 minus 20 is 0. Oh, this actually does yield a 0 over 0. So there is a hole at x equals negative 5. Let's check the other one. So we have negative 2 squared is positive 4. Minus 2 minus 20 over 0. Uh, that's, that's 4 minus 2 is 2. That's negative 22 over 0. So that's vertical asymptote for sure. Negative 2. So my vertical asymptote is right here. This guy is, as I, as I just said, is a hole. So it's just a discontinuity in, in the graph. If you, uh, if you ever get a 0 over 0, that means it's just a hole in the graph. Uh, so I'll graph this one. I know we're going a little bit long here, but I'll put this one into my calculator here and see what I get. I'll show you what the, what the hole in the graph actually looks like. You're not going to really be able to see it, but you have to know where to look. Uh, x squared plus 7x plus 10. All right, so when we graph this, we're definitely going to see our vertical asymptote at negative 2. And I'll zoom standard here, zoom 6. At negative 2, we can see we have a nice divergence there. There's an asymptote. And <clears throat> uh, I think we actually forgot a, a horizontal one, too. I'll, co I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. But um, the hole in the graph would, uh, would graph like this. So let me actually graph this one. Um, so I've got, let's see. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, positive 1, 2, 3. And I'm going really fast here because I'm running out of time. But uh, we, we already said that we have a vertical at negative 2. All right, in our graph, confirm that. So that is x equals negative 2. Uh, we want to revisit the horizontal. I forgot that one because the horizontal asymptote occurs, as I said, whenever there is the same degree on top as there is on bottom, it's just the ratio of, it's the ratio of, of the coefficients. So that is our y equals positive 1 is our horizontal. That's not very good. That's our horizontal. So we want to plot that as well. That's y equals 1. And uh, the graph again, just to get a good idea, kind of goes like this. So it goes, maybe I'll put this in, uh, maybe I'll actually put the graph in blue. So the graph goes like this. And up here it does something very similar but there's a hole that we want to look at, so that's at negative five. So let me bring this out a little bit. So we have four, five, six, all right. So here's the hole that I'm talking about. Negative one, two, three, four, five. So just put a little hole right there and bring it on down to infinity. Because at that value right there, that whole value, uh, they're, they're actually, you know, it's a zero over zero, so it's totally undefined, and it's, uh, there's a discontinuity in the domain. 
All right, so this is kind of an interesting, uh, interesting little problem here. If you're talking about domain values, you know, we're talking the set of all x's. Let me write that a little bit better. The set of all x values that are real, such that x cannot be negative five or negative two. Uh, the range values are the up and down values, so it's going to be the set of all y's that are real such that y cannot be positive 1. All right, so that's your domain and range. All right, so now it's kind of a, a you know, long video, about 36 minutes here, but uh, I think asymptotes can be really confusing unless you get a ton of practice with them uh, and see the different types of asymptotes. You know, as I said, a lot of times there are, there are mixtures of asymptotes, vertical, horizontal, oblique, and sometimes there are holes, all right? But, uh, you know, it all comes back to these four basic categories, right? These four basic categories will get you through pretty much any problem. So I hope that helped you.